Hey everybody, today is another bullet journal video. My name's Elsa. I live full time in a 13 foot scamp trailer with partner Baron and dog camp. <laughs> Why? <laughs> We've been living this way for over three years, and in my bullet journal, I keep a detailed record of all of it. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your own bullet journal based on my own personal minimal style. The bullet journaling method was developed by writer Carol. It's a method for rapid logging, rapid note taking, and with that basic structure, there are infinite possibilities of what you can do. I will explain his method briefly in a minute, but first, let's talk tools. You'll need a journal. I use Dingbat's journals with dotted paper. They're eco-friendly, all materials used are degradable, vegan, and recyclable. They use less water than standard notebooks, and any extra water is then treated and put back into the system cleaner than it was gathered. Or so they say. This is my second Dingbat's journal, and I really like it. You'll need a pen. A lot of people use piles of markers and pens, and I used to be one of them, but I don't have a lot of space in the scamp and realized that it's easiest for me to use just one pen in just one color. I used to use felt tip pens, and I still use them when I'm making my spreads, but for the most part, I just use a basic rollerball pen. I have a ruler that helps me make straight lines, but it's not necessary. Here's an example of a spread I used with no rulers, and it still looks great. I also have a tiny photo printer for my journals. I do a lot of photography and think it's fun to illustrate a month with one photo. It's an HP Sprocket printer. The quality of the printer is pretty eh. It prints all my photos pink for some reason, but the photos are sticky and it's small and easy. And that's all my tools, you really don't need much. Just like I was when I started bullet journaling, a lot of you tell me you're afraid to begin a bullet journal because you don't know what spreads to make, or how to organize, or what to track. You've got option overwhelm. And to that I say start simple. Your bullet journal will evolve as you do. I started my bullet journal with a few cutesy spreads that I saw a lot of other people do, but I never used them, never looked at them, and personally found them to be a waste of space. My new journal begins with a calendar of all 12 months. This helps me create all my monthly spreads, being able to quickly see the days of each month. I then have a birthday spread so I can let all my favorite people know I'm thinking about them. Here is my blank February spread. I do a one page monthly calendar that specifically operates as a way for me to track my location since we're moving all the time. Each box of the calendar is made up of four by four squares. With the leftover space below, I'll attach a photo of the month and write out some goals. I always keep a gratitude page. I find this to be one of my most important pages every month. I write gratitude at the top and number the days of the month. Typically, I also add a daily memories page, one line of memories each day, but winter is slow and I'm daily journaling instead. I also like to add another rotating daily page. I change this every month to give myself something new to track and learn about myself. I then keep a two page monthly calendar. This is where I do all my monthly planning and scheduling. I used to do a two-page weekly calendar, but I could never fill it and didn't like the wasted space. I then went to a smaller form of a weekly calendar. The problem with this for me was that I wanted to see all my days of the month on one page, so I condensed even smaller to my two-page monthly calendar like this. I can see the entire month at a glance. Each of these boxes is seven by 10 little squares. The bottom row is seven by nine because the page is only 39 squares tall and 28 across. I write the day of the week at the top and the date in the corner. And in these boxes, I use Writer Carol's bullet journaling method. I use a dot for a task, an X when a task or event is complete, a dash for a note, open circle for an event, an arrow if I've moved a task forward or backward in the week. I personally use a triangle to denote quick memories, an exclamation mark for important things, and a strike through means delete. Here's what it looks like in practice. I'm tasking myself to find something red to wear because the Kansas City Chiefs made it into the Super Bowl. I've got a task to get camp new food with a note to switch to the lamb blend. There's an X on the dot because I completed the task. There's a few more tasks and then an open circle for the event of ecstatic dance. There's an important note to eliminate dairy from my diet. And below that, a deleted task to buy donuts. If you don't want to create a big grid for your monthly calendar, here's an example of writer Carol's monthly spread. You've got the days of the week on the left and the date on the right. 
You list big events next to the number, and on the page on the right, list out all your monthly tasks. Here's an example of my old weekly spreads made super simple with one pen and no ruler. These spreads take maybe two minutes to make and require no artistic skill. And I actually think the minimal look is cooler than decorative, but that's personal preference. And on that note about minimal style, some people like to give me sass about my bullet journal not being truly minimal. And yeah, when you look at it, it doesn't really seem minimal at all, but it's the information that's complex. The spreads are as minimal as you can make them. This is my tracker, two lines numbered at the bottom with the days of the month. On the left, I list all the things I want to track. I personally track stimulants. I like seeing how often I'm stimulating myself with things like caffeine, sugar, and alcohol. Above that, I track foods, things I try not to eat too much of, foods I want to be sure to add more of. I like to keep track of exercise and vitamins and whatever else in the month I'm interested in. If I consumed or participated in something that day, it gets a dot. Simple as that. These lines here mean that I began tracking that thing mid-month. The line is the day I started tracking it. You can track whatever you want here. Work projects, chores, water intake, how often you smile at strangers or give to other people. The options are limitless. Above that, I like to keep track of my intermittent fasting. It makes me feel good. The open circle means that I broke my fast or ended my day with a caloric drink. And the closed circle means that I broke or started my fast with food. Above that, I track my mood, stress, and sleep. I track my sleep based on hours, zero to 10, usually staying in the eight to nine range. I track my stress on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 meaning low stress, 10 meaning high stress. I want that line to be as low as possible. I track my mood in the same way, but 0 meaning bad mood, 10 meaning great mood, and I want that line to be high. When I see my mood and stress dip into each other, it means I had a turbulent day. And by tracking this way every month, I'm able to see that those spikes often happen when I'm not getting much sleep. I keep this particular tracking graph in the same spot on the page every month so that I can quickly compare months side by side. I also look at the varying points in the graphs and follow them down into my diet and activity trackers to see how they correlate with my recent diet and exercise. It's all very fascinating to me. On the following pages I have my fertility awareness method chart. I don't feel comfortable teaching the workings of this fertility awareness method and recommend you read the book Taking Charge of Your Fertility by Tony Westschler if you're coming into this completely new. In a nutshell, the fertility awareness method allows for me to see different spikes in my hormone levels based on my temperature that I take the moment I wake up. I can tell based on my temperatures when I'm ovulating and when I will start my period. Temperatures should be low during the follicular phase of your cycle when estrogen is naturally high and should be high during your luteal phase when estrogen lowers and progesterone is high. I began tracking my menstrual cycle because I spot before every period every month and think that might have something to do with high estrogen. In tracking, I've learned that soy, a phytoestrogen, makes me spot within 12 hours of consuming only during my luteal phase, the phase between ovulation and the start of my period when estrogen is supposed to be low. When I go to the gynecologist with these findings, they usually have little to say and advise for me to get back on hormonal birth control. So I have an appointment with a naturopath to try to get this figured out. And that's the end of my bullet journal this month. But quickly before I leave you, I wanna mention some of the ways I've been able to maintain a daily bullet journal practice. Setting up my bullet journal each month takes 30 minutes to an hour. It doesn't have to take this long if you haven't got the time, but time is kind of the point. You're putting time into yourself here. Create what you need and what you want because you want to take care of and learn about yourself. Keep your bullet journal simple. If it overwhelms you, it won't be productive. If you decide down the road to add more to your spreads, great. Start small and it will evolve as you do. Using one color and one pen helps me feel less overwhelmed. I also love how clean and minimal my black and white pages look. Make bullet journaling part of your routine. My bullet journal takes a couple minutes to fill out each day. That's it. Sometimes I do it at night before bed, and if not, I do it first thing in the morning before I open up my laptop. Leave it out on a prominent countertop or on your nightstand. If you don't see it, you won't use it. And after a while, it becomes habit. Like sleeping with my retainers in. <laughs> I feel incomplete without it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so that you can easily refer back to it in your liked videos folder as you start your own bullet journal. 
don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to leave any questions you have down below. Baron and I read each comment and try to answer them all as best we can. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.